Okay, so let me do these two questions as a group, uh, mainly because they are kind of in this group of um, questions that deal with the definition of work and kind of, um, it, it's a word question. You know, you have to read the question carefully and understand what they're asking about and answer accordingly. So the first question says, how much work is done against gravitational force on a five kilograms? So I think I'm going to eventually get to giving an answer for work. And um, since this is where we are at, uh, we are going to be using the definition of work. That work done by a force is the force dot product with the displacement. And um, you could... Um, I'll write this in this form that doesn't use the vector notation, which is a force times the displacement in the direction parallel to the force. I'm using this form because they talk about vertical climb. So we are given the distance that's parallel to the directional force. So we're going to be using that. And what's important here is that we need to work through force. So even though I'm not going to do full force analysis, I think it's useful to have just a picture of the free body diagram in mind so that I'm thinking about the force, I know what forces are on this thing. So I have the uh, brief case of some mass. Uh, it's uh, carried from the ground floor to the roof of the Empire State Building. Hmm. So I get a sense that as it's moving up, there isn't really a net acceleration. It's not like a reaching some velocity at the top and starting from some, it's not doing that. So I'm gonna have to think about two forces, gravity that's always there and some other force that's gonna be there um, so that this doesn't accelerate downward. So this would be some applied force. And when it's talking about how much work is done against the gravitational force, so we have this force that's opposed to the gravitational force. So the question must be asking about how much work does this force do? That, that's really what the question comes down to. So uh, since with the vertical climb, our displacement will be upward, we should have a positive work done. And um, to apply this definition of work, we already have this value. Also, we need this upward force, Just staring at this free body diagram for a bit. Hopefully you get that this should be equal to mg because net force is zero. Uh, and you know, you can do the full standard strategy, but hopefully by now, this is simple enough. You can say that this applied force must be equal to its weight. So the so that, that should give us the correct answer for the work done against the gravitational force. And, oops, uh, and our interpretation of what happens to that work, let me just calculate the number. So gravitational force, five times 9.8, that's equally magnitude to the applied force times the displacement, 380 meters. So amount of work done will be 18,620 joules. And our interpretation of what happens with the work is it the, the, so this is the, this gives you some kind of change of energy, transfer of energy. And the change in energy is equals to the potential energy of the briefcase. So I'll plug it in, in number in, in a bit. Uh, before I do that, I want to do the second question, which again is um, kind of a word question that deals with the definition of work. So the question starts out by giving us the amount of work. So um, keep that in mind that this is the amount of work being done. And it says, uh, I have a spring that's been compressed by five centimeters. So I guess this is the picture I have in mind. Um, I have a spring of some equilibrium length and with application of some force on this thing, um, I've uh, compressed it down to something like this. And they are giving us this distances compressed down as five centimeters. Tells him what is the force constant of the spring. Hmm. Okay, 
It would have been nice if they gave us amount of force, then I could use Hooke's Law to answer this question. <laughs> but they didn't give us force, uh, they gave us work. And uh, it might be tempting for people to try to do something like this. Work done is a force times uh, displacement and somehow work through this. Um, you could, but it's complicated. So you shouldn't. The biggest challenge here is that this force is a function of displacement. So you can't simply um, you can't simply take this amount of work, divide out the distance to get the force, use that in this formula. You, you can't do that. That's the kind of approach that leaves people confused and stuck in places that they shouldn't be stuck. So uh, you should have uh, the correct kind of conceptual um, starting place. So if uh, using this definition directly is not useful, I mean, there is a way to do it, but it's going to be complicated. Then what's good to think about is almost by this point in the semester, a lot of the quantities you see will have more than one way of being addressed. So they will usually have a definition um, so this is actually the definition of work, and sometimes that's useful to use. But, um, but you know, your textbook, it's not just a list of definitions. It uses those definitions to drive other formulas. So sometimes those other formulas are useful. And with work, the main other meaning you can attach to it, other than this definition, is this fact that however much work is done, it translates somehow to a change of energy. Uh, depending on context, it might go to kinetic energy, it might go to potential energy, it might go to some other non-mechanical energy that's lost uh, from mechanical energy. So this meaning of work as representing change of energy, that's what's going to be useful here. So you have a spring that's been compressed by this amount that uh, has resulted in some change in potential energy. So it went from potential energy of zero uh, to uh, potential energy of one half K times delta X squared. And this is a formula that's derived in the textbook. And to derive this formula, you, the textbook and lecture went through this, uh, do the whole calculus stuff to drive this and you can do that you know that is the way to use this and somehow get the right answer but you know it's a, a lot of duplication of work so i'm just going to start from here start from the knowledge that by knowing the amount of spring is compressed i can relate that to some change of potential energy of spring uh, well, that this formula is actually the change. That is the formula for spring potential energy. It just happens to change from zero. Um, and that I'm going to say is equal to the amount of work being done. So this is going to be my starting equation. And staring at it for a bit, I see that uh, it's okay. I don't know. I'm trying to solve it. Delta x I'm given, w I'm given. Okay, so I can just solve for k. So I'm just going to do that algebra in my head, if necessary. Pause a little bit and you know, write it on a piece of paper. So spring constant is given by 2 times the amount of work done divided by delta x squared. So let me plug in the numbers. I'm just going to convert everything to basic SI units. And then later on, account for this k when I'm plugging in the numbers. So I have. Um, the two times amount of work done in basic SI units, 510, divided by the basic SI unit of 5 centimeter, 0 0.05 meter squared um, equals, so that's the K in the unit of Newton per meter, basic SI units. In kilonewtons per meter, uh, so I got to divide it by 1,000. Uh, so take this, divide by 1,000. Because there's thousand newtons in a kilonewton, so four hundred and eight uh, kilonewton per meter. So, so yeah, that that should be it. Let's plug in the numbers and double check. So four hundred eight. Um, good. And let's go back and find that other thing. If I do back button, will it get me? Okay, yeah, yeah. 
So how much work was done? Uh, 18, 6, 20. And I'm saying, if I read the question right, it should have... I think that's a mistake. I mean, wait, did I? Oh, when I refreshed, the number changed. Uh -huh. I gotta figure out a better way to do this. Uh, all right, two, two, three, four, four. Uh, two, two, three, four. Yeah, good. And yeah, it should be positive because um, it would be a different question if the question asked to you, how much work does gravitational force do? It's a different question from how much work was done against gravitational force. It's uh, semantics. <laughs> good. Okay.